You've seen it on YouTube. You've seen it fire up the hill at Goodwood. Well, Subaru is letting me have a go in the Huckster. So, learning to drive the Huckster. I've got 850 horsepower, very narrow circuit. I just touched the brakes and the wings flew up. I can't believe how responsive the engine is, given it's got a big turbocharger. It's remarkable. It doesn't sound like a flat four either. The steering is very light, very direct. It just feels like it was built for a purpose. Let's put this ALS on. What a thing, okay. What it wants to do is it wants to drift with the wheels straight. So it's not like driving a rear wheel drive car. Very interesting. It's going to take a bit of time to get my head around it. You turn it in on the on the left foot of the brake, and then just give it some gas. Travis is so tall, I'm not really in the seat. The way I drive a car, most rear wheel drive, big slidey stuff you see, using lock as I'm driving it sideways. This car wants to get to an angle, and then the front wheels want to be straight. It's sort of signature Ken Block style really, isn't it? But it's not really the way I drive. It's just done a set of rears in three laps of Lytton Hill, which is, I think, probably a mile long. Can I key off for a minute? Is that all right? We'd like to ask for a moment of your time. Right, I'm here in the nerve centre. I'm here with Dan who's powertrain department manager. Basically, he's responsible for the insanity that is the Huckster. Yeah. Right, talk me through, first of all, the cabin layout and why I happen to be sitting with my head next to a B-pillar. The car has a tubular chassis, so it's based on the latest WRC technology. So it has twin main hoop. You can see all the support structure inside. Yeah. We wanted a lot of safety for all the jumps and crazy stunts that Travis might do. At the same time, we want it to look like a production car. So it has wiper knobs, heater control, radio. The radio is the same. Functioning radio. So, so it's a 1983, what model is it? GL wagon. GL wagon. Yeah. The boxy one. The boxy one, yeah. But what I love about this is this is a car that was expressly built to be filmed. So that's the whole point, wasn't it? Yeah, it was made for the video. Travis, he's always trying to one up the next stunt so safety was a concern reliability and basically have fun make a make a video so i've got gear lever six speed sequential six by sadev by sadev yep okay. geared to 175 miles per hour it's got closed loop gear cut so you can flat shift yep carbon fiber handbrake and the launch button is on the top here i mean it's all ergonomically perfect for sliding around the only problem is travis i believe is six foot one uh i'm not i'm a lot less than six foot one and right now i can't reach the pedals so we'll have myself out because this seat is just this seat isn't moving it's absolutely bolted into the the structure of the car what's that thing to your left that worries me slightly so we did a lot of stunts with water around so there were rescue divers in case the car went in the water if travis was stuck or upside down this gives them about a minute of air standard feature in a 83 wagon you know rescue air aqua lung yep um, it's fantastic. It's, a, it's got some lovely nods to the original car, the, the shape of the dashboard. The louvers on the back of it as well, it's just so 80s. Can we have a look at the engine? Because that clearly is the madness we need to Absolutely. really understand. Absolutely, yeah. Love to show you. So it's a billet block, 2.3 liter displacement, billet cylinder heads. Uh, a lot of this was derived from the Rallycross program. So, yeah. uh, but we increased the displacement to be able to make eight, 862 horsepower, 680 foot-pounds of torque with a red line of 8,500 RPM. Sorry, say that power figure again? 862 brake horsepower. 
from how many turbochargers? One turbo. It's got the front mount turbocharger. One. Tu how big is the turbocharger? Uh, Did you borrow it from that truck? <laughs> no, but it's one of the um, largest motorsport uh, turbos in that frame from Garrett. Uh, what else has it been used on? Come on, give us a clue. Uh, the only other thing I know it's been used on is a car with a horse on the front. So. <laughs> Let's look at the packaging difficulties here. This is so far back. Yep. I mean, it's effectively front mid-engine, isn't it? Yeah, so the engine's 50% over the front wheel center line. So normally, front of the engine would and be And that was here. a specific design parameter at the beginning, was it? You wanted it that far back? Or did you just try and get it as far back as, as possible? As far back as possible. It's huge for inertia. Yeah. And all the stunts that he needs to do, it makes a big impact. Yeah. Um, but when the engine comes back, it's a challenge because we have the steering rack, a front differential, roll bar, the exhaust manifold, all the package there. So it's super tight clearances between all the components we can get up to two post-it notes for clearance, so. It's ridiculous, it's so far back. So the turbo is sitting ahead of the engine here because there's no space behind there at all. There's no space. You can't sort of hop, it's not a V, you can't hop flat it, whatever you'd call it. No, also it takes about half the distance out of the exhaust. You get really good response from that, but a short manifold. Uh, suspension, this absolutely massive damper tube here, it's enormous. Uh, it's Riger, is it? Riger, yeah. They're, they're like rallying royalty if you're not into that stuff. They really are. That, that's um, that's the Patek Philippe of the suspension world. Top mounts are what look like they're from a truck. Yeah, it's based off the rallycross program, but with these crazy stunts, we never know if he's going to land on one wheel or Have on the back. Have you bent any so. of this doing the stunts? No, we haven't. It's been really? super robust. Yeah. And did you go out and, and, and have to test it a lot, or did you just finish it and just go out and film? Because Ken was famous for that. Ken would finish a car, yeah. and then he'd, the next day he'd be filming it. I'd be thinking, well, you, you've tested this for months. He'd go, I only drove it the first time yesterday. We did a lot of testing. So uh, we knew we needed to clear a certain distance for this crazy jump to yeah. jump over the helicopter. We also went to a NASCAR track to do the top speed, but we could only hit 140 miles per hour on the track because we ran out of distance. Yeah. In the actual filming, when he's with the jet, he hit 169 miles per hour drag racing the jet. The arrow is definitely effective. A lot of people wonder about the air brakes and, and Do the they wing. Work? They were studied in CFD and they work and we choose when to turn them on and off depending on the stunt that's needed. So it's massively stiff. It's got immense suspension. It likes to fly. It's got over 850 horsepower. Um, I'll give it a go. Okay. But it's gonna take me some time. Also, I've got to try and reach the pedals. Uh, this could be one of the most unimpressive driving performances you've ever seen. So usually we'll do an out lap, like a cruising lap, in Cal 1, in position 1. And then when you want to go hot, go to 2. And then after you're done, you go back to 1. We want a little bit of a cool down to get everything okay. right now. Yep. You feel good? Yep. Okay. Right, I've now got to think about whether I can actually enjoy driving this thing. I found the first bit lovely, but now it's moving around quite a lot. And my technique, apparently, I should be on the bar more making all four wheels spin. The old crowd pleaser here. I wonder what that does, let's give it a yank. Oh yeah, that's quite active. The setup of the car is for Goodwood. So it turns in really nicely. It's not, I'm in a drift car that's sort of wanted to be a track car. That's my excuse for when I can't drive it like the main man. But if you try and drive it straight, it's actually really quite pleasant. It's unbelievable. It's just a weapon. It's a bit of a struggle to actually talk while I'm driving it. It's just eating the rear tyres as well. So I'm going to back off a bit for the cameras. But basically, when the rear tyres are with me, it's lovely, but when they start to go, it becomes a real handful. I don't think I've got the bollocks to give it the full handbrake and go backwards around one of these corners. It's just, there's lots of stuff to hit. The engine, is a masterpiece. This side of gearbox, gorgeous as well. Something about a lever, I love a lever. Summary thoughts then. It's the first car I've ever driven that was designed 
just to be stupid in. But that still requires like real focus. I love it. It's it's the ultimate playground idiocy tool. I'll tell you what, it's not to be trifled with. It's an animal, absolute animal. What a thing! Fair play to Travis Pastrana. He is quite the wheelman. The power, but also how spiky it can be on the limit. One thing I haven't tried, however, that's the, the launch thing. I mean, if you had the chance, you would, wouldn't you? You just would. So, I've been told to get into first gear. Pretending I'm Travis now, I'm longer and better looking. ALS on, handbrake, but... <laughs> Wow, what an adrenaline rush, all that power. But I just love a vehicle that's been made for a singular purpose. Normally it's for comfort, normally it's for speed or endurance. This has been made for someone to behave like an absolute dick, and I love that. 